Mr. Truck here with another exciting truck review. This time it's a 2017 Ram Dually 3500 Diesel Limited. So it's like the top of the line. Almost 80,000. Just a few bucks shy of $80,000. And we got a Cimron that's a little over 130,000. So we're over 210,000 a rig, Kelsey. And Kelsey's back. Hi, everybody. <laughs> What's the power here in this Cummins? Six cylinder, 6.7 turbo diesel. It's 385 horsepower to 900 foot pounds of torque. Cool, 900 is a lot of torque. We got our camper mirrors, we got everything on this puppy. It's loaded to the max, even has sunroof. And we're going to tell you all about the truck, all about the trailer. So come join us up here in Estes Park in the high country. Let's see how you fit in this big ram. I enjoy these rams. Yeah. The seats are very comfortable. There's always lots of room. Well, this 10 way seat, you should always find yeah. a place that fits. The adjustable seats and the pedals move on this one. You got your lights. I don't know what this one does. Well, that's, that's for the dash. lights. When you turn your headlights on, and sometimes you have to change the dim and the dash to yep, see the them. Dash lights. Yeah. But it doesn't, it has tilt in telescope. I do no, know. just this tilt. Tels, just tilt. They haven't figured out telescope yet. Darn it. This I is a weird spot for your four-wheel drive. Oh, yeah, drive. for four-wheel drive knob, yeah. So well, show me the storage under the back seat storage? that you didn't get in your Eco Diesel. <laughs> I did. Oh, I you got, did? The... See, that folds down, and you got that folds up to a flat floor. Yeah, you got the these out. legs. I did get these. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. You can haul your big screen TV to the football game to your, your tailgate party. Actually, we were thinking if anybody gets laid over in the middle of the night, it, it curls out into a nice bed. Well, yeah, it's, flat. it's got pretty wide. And you got little saddlebags on the back of the seats. You can throw all your valuables in there. See, a lot of purses made like that. I do too. Cool. What's this ram bag? Is this oh, that's your ball, ball bag, bag for your greasy ball. So I had to bring me one. This. So you put your pucks in there and your greasy ball and store them under your seat. Should always have a fancy bag for your greasy ball. Good thinking, ram. Good thinking. <laughs> under your seat, does this one have coolers under it too? Uh, yeah, they, I think they all do now. They all have a place to put your six packs in. Oh. And store them in there, yeah. Spare balls. Throw your rice in there because it's got a drain on it. It does have a drain plug. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yep. And they're all LED lit. This limited yeah. edition has the nice stitching in the seats. Yeah. Very nice stitching in yeah, the seats. Yeah, it's it's almost I don't think cut that in. Guess it is stitching. It's stitched. It's pretty cool. It's kinda like they have that sign of design is in the dash too. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, cool. It's a nice looking pickup. Yes. So this big North Star Living Quarters horse trailer. North Star, it's their top of the line. And we're looking at the electric jacks, electric over hydraulic. So Kelsey, run the buttons. <laughs> cool. And what's cool about it is you can run both jacks together or one at a time to level yourself out which is awesome oh your tea yeah turn my key off yeah that why happens. isn't it working okay do we have pull them both back up okay now this puppy's got like two three, batteries three. and a Ten, three, okay, three batteries and a ton of electronics and isolators and fuses and breakers. I mean, this is a regular space shuttle. Awesome. And the big tanks, two of them. And then over here is the air system. 
which is so cool. You can dump this to get your horses in there easier. And it's a great ride. It's uh, from Dexter Axel's Airflex. And what this puppy does, it'll actually run on airbags and torsion together. So that, you know, it gives you like a velvet ride. I've videos horses in these and watched them without it kick the heck out of the trailer. And with it, they're just calm and happy to be there. But this is a great trailer with all the toys. And now, Kelsey, what else can we look at? This here has a living quarters from Outlaw. Yep, but it's on the other side. So the entrance for the living quarters is on the other side. Yeah, and this is big. All these LED lights I love. Mm -hmm. And this has all the manger compartments for storage. They're huge. They yeah. Goodness gracious. They're huge. You could live in this. We could rent this out. <laughs> and you put ladders in there and low disc full of hay. says a big hay pod. Wow, you got lights. This mm -hmm. is just too awesome. It's huge. Big manger compartment storage. And it's got all the drop downs. Show me one of the drop downs because you have a great uh, a horse guard on them. Maybe. Is it locked? I'm sure. Yeah. There you go. And there's the part that blocks the horse so he can't get out. And you can lift that up and open it to feed him in. they got a great system great. of drop downs. And here's your gas can for the owning 4,000 watt generator up on top in the hay pod. You fill it up here. You don't have to drag cans of gas on top. And let's see. What's this escape door do? It's got a this drop just, down. Just the escape door. Yeah. So but pretty cool. They have you got breast bars and butt bars and mm -hmm. all kinds of bars in there. And they have a, an exit. Yeah, a door into the living quarters, like to a mud room. So if you got your boots covered with horse apples or road apples, you can walk into the bathroom. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. The old mud room. Cool. It's a great design for the trailer. Oh, you got the ladder down already. Ladder down. This is their ladder. They also have a hay pod built into some of these. Lifts bales up on top, but this has a slide out ladder. And on top, there's a big generator and the big hay pod, which it has, it's all covered. So especially in the East Coast, it's wonderful. But with the price of hay, you got it all covered and sealed up on top. You open that up, it's like a giant tonneau cover. And then you walk back in there, it's got a, a V-shaped tunnel, if you can see it in the middle. Yeah, there it is. You can see how you can walk right into the hay pod. Awesome. That's got struts on it to help you open it up. Well, that's a big door. You can go sailing. You put your hay bales in there. That is so awesome. It's well designed when keep that hay dry. And then the generator is up on top away from the sleeping area, which is nice. Nice and quiet. Cool. Now show us the rear tack. These trailers are very popular now with the tack on the very rear end. So you got a whole eight foot wide tack room. Put all those cool $5,000 saddles in. Oh yeah, you got pull-out saddle racks, you got all kinds of shelves in there, bridle hooks, wow. That's got a strut on it to pull the saddle racks out, yeah. Yeah, you got four saddles for four horse, that makes sense. Look how much room you have in there for storage, holy cow. That's awesome, big old shelving. Plenty of bridle hooks, whatever you need. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. You got a brush basket and blanket hooks. And a rack, it's on a strut too. And then it's got a ramp, because this is a side load. You got steps everywhere to get into the tack room and to get into living quarters. 
and you got the big ramp so you can get up in there and that's how you load the horses no more jumping yeah well this has got drop down doors on this side I thought it had bus windows but it's got drop downs drop on down. both sides which I really like oh yeah look in here there's a stud panel yeah it's a stud divider in the front well padded look how well designed heavy duty dividers are in here full got, troughs too. yeah that's part of the manger you got put your water in there your hay in there and then it's got four vents above it and the insulated roof I love that roof on there these are like a honeycomb fiberglass style and you can walk all over the top of this but look LED lights in here I don't know what the light switch for these is. Um, it's up front. The other side. Yeah, with all those vents between the windows and the vents, your horses will be plenty ventilated. A lot of air. They need a lot of air. Awesome. Then you got a butt bar to back that strap so they can't back out on you once they get in there, and then you can get the ramp closed. Cool. I bet I can't even get out of here now. May not let you out. <laughs> okay. Cool ramp. I need a ramp for mine. I know it. That's a good way to load. And all this stuff tucks up. Factory ramps are so nice. You don't have to worry about them. They'll, they're designed for the trailer. And it's got a butterfly latch on it. Yeah, let's see if we can get enough light to go inside. And they've got a big canopy. Nice. This is their new siding. They changed the angle of it a bit, which is cool. It's all aluminum. Screen door. It's got this nice new grill on the bottom, so when you kick it, you don't break it. And in here, wow. This has got all the beautiful wood, and that's real wood. A lot of it's hardwood. Got the big foam mattress, the dinette, oh, and a little kind of a corner couch. That's awesome. Then there's your step up to the bed. A lot of cabinets. Lots of cabinets. Oh, yeah, that's like that old copper stamped siding you used to see in bars. I'm sure mm -hmm. there's a name for it. The big sink and the burner and the refrigerator. Beautiful kitchenette. And the TV that swings around. And the bathroom, which would be your mudroom, too. Mm -hmm which is awesome you go back and go out to the horse stalls and this is a big cupboard There's two racks two clothes racks in it lots it's of kind of dark in there that light but wonderful shower with a skylight yeah awesome love the woodwork and the outlaw conversions yeah a hat two hat hooks or two hat Holders above the door. Yeah, I bet that's a in. pantry thing in there. This See is that? Pantry. Nope. Yeah, more clothes hooks. I guess yep. that's what they wanted. A lot of these will have a pantry that slides out, but and the whole electronic things. And all the gauges tells you what your generator's doing. Your fuel. You can start it from down here, of course. Set up with direct TV. Oh, there's your awning, your power awning. Wow, I want this one. Can you buy this one for me, Kelsey? Can we keep it? Yes. Oh, wow, you got storage in the step. Yep, yeah, storage. Put your 45 in there. Your Uzi. There's a lot. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's your hat racks. Have yeah, you got hat racks in? There's a lot of space in this little. Oh, there is. It's, it's made to have fun. This is bigger than a weekender. You got cabinets clear in the front, too. And your table goes down into a, a bed, too. You betcha. So that means it probably sleeps four to five. Whatever the configuration is, that's awesome. Oh, that is cool. It's got clamps on it. That's nice. It's better than just sticking it in a hole. That's what most of them have. That's actually clamped. That's a good design for the table. Can't figure it out right now. Yeah. Yeah, they just tighten up and fold over. That's good. So you don't kick them with your feet. A nice design. Cool. Well, let's get out of Dodge. Let's. Well, Kelsey, I'm sure everybody's going to be glad to see you back. They're all making comments. Where's Kelsey? Hello, everybody. We're here. <laughs> now, this is a limited Ram 3500 Dually, the most expensive one they have for 2017. It is gorgeous inside. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun. We're pulling a Cimarron four-horse 
I think it's called a Pro Star, Pro something. I'll look it up. But it's an awesome trailer. It is. It's, it feels like nothing. But you got a big, also got a tall trailer. trailer. Yeah, yeah. This truck is made for this trailer. Actually, the truck is right under eighty thousand. I mean, just a few dollars. It's seventy nine nine ninety nine. Yeah, seventy nine nine sixty five MSRP. So figure 80, 80 and 130. What's that? 210,000? We're nice, driving, right? Yeah, we're driving $210,000 down the road. Which is awesome because, you know, the truck has air ride, which I really like. Very smooth. I, I right? liked it, yeah, and I liked it better on the 2500. And last year on the 3500 Dually, the air ride did very well loaded, but empty was rough. I didn't mm -hmm. like it. This one, a year later, is smooth empty. So I'm not nice. sure what they changed, but they did change some kind of calibration or something. Uh, the only thing they need to change on it now is put the bigger airlines in the air tank, and then we put some alcohol in the winter so it freezes up, you know, like it does in Colorado. But this puppy is done. It's, it's running very well. And giant leaf springs back there, so it's got leaf springs on it, plus to the inside. They've got a. Air. It's like an aftermarket airbag that they put on from the factory. But this one too has alternate trailer height that you see it on in your dash and it says button down here we have show down the camera which is nice because what that does if you've got the proper weight on there and let the rear of the truck down an inch which levels you out and probably helps a little bit there with dynamics it's going to save you some gas it, it yeah. helps with pulling it yeah so this puppy is uh is set up it's made for trailers and that's what we're doing with it but it, it's it, you know the nice thing about these i mean in the class of Ram, Ford, and GM, it's it's not the highest torque, it's not the highest horsepower, but when you're going down the road with a big trailer, it feels powerful. It does. It does. It feels like at any moment you can just go as fast as you want, and same way it's slowing it down, exhaust brake on it, and I always use the full, the automatic exhaust brake, I mean, we've gone them back and forth, and, and the automatic exhaust brake is good for, it's like horses, so you don't jerk it hard when you're slowing down. Any livestock. Yeah, and we've tried them both ways, and you know, Fragile Ram will tell us to use the automatic. It's supposed to slow us down, like on the high gallon, but I, I, I don't agree with that. I think full exhaust brake is what I like. That's what I want to use, and to me, that's what works the best. That's what I do use. Yeah, yeah. You know, I like to. I've already I filmed the dash. I like this dash really well, the gauges and all that. And just one powerful machine. Yeah. Oh, is it buzzing? It's going off. Well, it's only a phone. Right, Donald Trump again. He always wants to talk to me. I'll talk to him later. Sorry. You know the problem. <laughs> I just feel it in the dash. I know. I just wish the four-wheel drive button was either it's, lower or something, because when you put it where you've got it, you can't really read any of it. You can't read it when you're in drive. Yeah, so you'd have to look around and all that. That's a small problem. Well, and the location of this one is a lot better than underneath the dash on the, yeah. the left-hand side yeah. or on the floor. There's, uh, and you've it's added, not horrible. Yeah, it's really not. Actually, the place of the brake control is really good. I like mm -hmm. that. It's the four drive that I don't. But you've added to your family of Dodge and Ram trucks, haven't you? Have. So what did you get? So we got a 2016 Eco Diesel. I like them so much. I went out and we bought them. Cool, yeah, you've driven and with me, I think, a long time ago. Yeah, we did We did two. We did two. Maybe you did two, yeah. Well, I, they're awesome. It's a truck that I very seriously considered, that three liter diesel. And now, and you got the eight speed automatic, and it's a short, short bit, so it's a five foot six bed. It's, it? it's the five, five, six, yes. Yeah. yeah. So you can still pull trailers. I can yeah. still pull trailers with it. Um, I. It's getting. 26 in town, 24 to 26 in town. Right. So I'm not good. dumping diesel down the drain. Yeah. I we haven't gone any long trips yet, but when I do go from pretty much Boulder to Loveland, I'm topping 30 miles an hour or 30 miles per gallon. So it's very very fuel efficient. It's slick. It's very comfortable. It's a lot like these seats. Yeah. The exact yeah. same seats. Yeah. Very 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 comfortable. Yeah, I imagine it's the same cab too. Yeah. It's just how they design these things. This always looks bigger because it's not it's a giant truck. But yep. uh, well, that's cool. And you're going to lift it? We will lift it and we will put air ride suspension in it because we didn't get that option. Yeah. But there'll be a few modifications done to it. Well, cool. 
I can see your, your collection of lifted trucks go on. Yep. And the Durango's gone. I'll miss the Durango. I think that I will miss the Durango the most. <laughs> After having it for so long, because we bought it new pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. But. That's good. Bigger and better things, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad the EcoDiesel's back on the market. Me too. Because I like that truck. It's, you know, I've got several friends with them that are, you know, driving all over the country and get 30 miles a gallon or more. It's, it's incredible. It's, it's and two, you know, my, my my wife passed away in June, and so she's got a car, and I would never really buy a car unless I had to. So now her car someday will become a truck, probably a truck like what you bought. Yeah. Because I don't laying down cars, I never have liked that. I, I like setting like you do a kitchen table chair. Yep. And that's how trucks are, and so I'm not really ever comfortable in a car. But uh, oh well. So I'll get another truck too later on. You gotta keep adding to these collections. Just can't, yep. get enough, can't get enough trucks. But anyway, this one we're taking it up to Estes Park, and we're gonna see how it does on the curves and the altitude and the grades. And let's do a grade shift. That's another thing, you know. Besides this truck feeling powerful, when it grade shifts, it just sounds so cool. It sounds like a Peterbilt. It does. Coming in, you know, like you're, you're shifting down a big diesel. Yeah, it's addicting sounds like the V8s and the half tank. Everybody wants those V8s because they're just used to the sound. And it sounds like a diesel truck. It's every bit of one. There's just no fuel mileage rating on this heavy duty that I was showing you. I just run around with it. Nine? Back. Yeah, a nine. And that's with a 33 foot trailer? Yeah, in it's something we like have. that. I'll look it up so that I. So we fit our 32 footer down the driveway, but it is it's tight. Yeah, and if you had your, if I could get your gates open and go through your grass, I could probably go in and out, but I didn't know if you were watering or not. We are, we just cut, so we are right in the middle of the irrigation. Then the suspension's down, we've got air right on the truck, and this trailer is air right. It's a, uh, I call it a hybrid, so it's torsion and airbags, and it rides like a dream. So we've got all these suspensions helping us out. And the GBW on this, on the trailer, it's got two 8,000 pound axles, so it's 16,000. But the difference is, in the horse trade industry, most manufacturers give you the GVW of a loaded trailer hooked to a truck. Yep. So it's like you hook up to your truck, you get loaded to the maximum, you drive over scale with just the trailer, and that's how they figure GW, G gross vehicle weight. Now in the RV industry, because their axles are almost to the middle of the trailer, they don't want much time weight, that's their whole goal. So they will do it, you know, the load of trailers sitting on the scale. And the horse trailers are like flatbeds and all the commercial trailers. They go by what the Dexter rules are in the manual on these axles where it's two-thirds back is where the axles are and not in the middle. So you got a whole better design. Yeah, I should tell you how long this is you don't clip somebody. <laughs> I'm not planning on clipping anybody. <laughs> It's 32,000, that's 32 feet and 6 32 inches, feet, 32 so and a half, yeah. 33 feet? Just yeah, right? just figure 33 and you won't hit anybody. $130,276 for the MSRP. 7 foot 7 inches tall, it's a 4 horse. And it is loaded, we'll go through all that stuff. It's an aluminum trailer. Super light. Yeah, it is super light. It's got an Onan 4000 generator on it. 17.5 wheels. These are probably 14.5 tires. We'll go look at that. Electric over hydraulic. Uh, brakes. These are disc brakes. These are about the most powerful things you can get. And it's got the dual electric over hydraulic jacks, which I love pushing the button to unhook a trailer. Look at that. You just flew through there like you're a semi driver. Make it through. You're just a big rig driver. I actually don't mind that this trailer pulls is very nice behind this yeah, truck. Yeah, it does. Very nice. It's got those aluminum wheels. It's a good looking trailer. Slick looking right together. And this is from Transwest Truck Trailer RV. Okay. Thank so you, Transwest. Sure, yes, I'm sure you can go contact Andrew and the folks back there and get you a good price on this. But, and this is a side load ramp. And that gives you that big, big tack room on the back, which people like. You can put a lot of stuff and you have that whole eight foot wide area for tack room. That's about what this trailer is, eight foot wide. If you count out to the fenders, you might be eight and a half. 
and a beautiful living quarters, which is an RV and a front horse trailer, and it's from Outlaw, and it's all, all wood, and then that part of the wood jump in it. Really very well made living quarters. The front is steepest and the roughest road you can. This is the a plan. test. Up here it's hard because they're so well maintained because they're, they're so touristy up here. Yeah, yes. It's but like, hopefully you know, to back road we get a little bit different. This truck, of course it's the 6.7 and we'll talk about power when we get the landing spot. It's a 32 gallon tank. I wish they would put a bigger tank. With the gas mileage you get, or the fuel mileage you get with it, with hauling a trailer, I do too. Yeah, because four it makes it short trips if you're on nine nine miles to the gallon. Right, you really need to put a, if you're pulling a big trailer, you need to put an extended tank on there. Yeah. Because, you know, Ford now, it's clear up to 48 gallon on a long bed on 350 and 450. 48 gallon. And Chevy is, I think they're 36 gallon still. And Ford standard tank is 38, so why would you want to be the smallest tank? I don't understand that, so hopefully they'll fix that. But I do like the dev tank on this. It's like Ford. It's in the cap with the diesel cap instead of GM Good. stuff. We open the hood and throw stuff in the engine. And it's Have to find GM's something. got to change that. But yeah, this is well done on the dev tank and a gauge on the dev tank. I like the gauge. I want to know what's going on. Not some little light that tells me that I'm... It's empty and yeah, that's it? Yeah, it's it's not good. Uh, idiot lights are not for the, should not be on that kind of a tank. You want to know how much you got left. Stash this, is really similar to the Eco Diesel. The what is? Oh, the, the dash. dash is very similar. Yeah, yeah, they they do, and it's a good dash, good layout, the analog gauges and the digital gauges. I mean, I can go to the digital you miles could. per gallon, which I go miles per hour, which I like. You can do a lot of things on this dash. There's a lot of options. Yeah. And the setup on it is to customize. I mean, I've got the gauges, the transmission temp, everything you could ever need if you are doing. Long yeah, you can scroll through the screens. Now, yep. this is your Eco Diesel a push button start? It is a push button start. Oh, you've got everything. I'll have to review that truck. I'll have to use it for a couple weeks. Whatever you need. We'll help break it in. Okay. Fucks me up as a G or Ram does their Moroni stickers with their gear ratios. Yeah. Okay, you, you always have three. Why? I mean, you want to confuse people. I guess this is how you do it. It starts off in a regular side of the Moroni. But the base truck is a 373. So you might think it has 373, but no. Nope. You gotta go over to the left side. And the left side, it starts off telling you you got a 342. No, you don't have a 342. Keep reading. You go down one more and it shows a 410, then it charges you $100, which is nothing. So the one they charge you money for, you know, is what you have. Yep. It's a 410, which is my favorite axle ratio. I know they're going to a lot of higher ones for fuel mileage now, and they're gearing up these transmissions to where the first and second is real low, so you can get by with those higher ratios. But this also has the Aishin transmission. So okay. this is set up heavy duty for the heavy duty. You got a very good transmission, a six speed automatic, and of course the Cummins, which is undeniably one of the best engines out there on diesel. They're actually rated 300,000 miles. Mm -hmm. Where the other two are rated 250,000 miles. So this is called a medium duty diesel. I always like that. I guess we'll call this the Brilliant Black Crystal Pearl Coat is what the outside called. Okay. It's a long name. Black Crystal, Brilliant Black Crystal Pearl. Yeah, you got that pretty fast. I probably couldn't repeat that to anybody if this was mine. Yeah. Yeah, this is that luxury package which cost you another 3200 Yep. 115 volts, auxiliary power, 20 inch wheels. We could be got some bling bling on this puppy. Well, it's got a monochrome bumper for black. Does. So we can actually do rap music in this one. You know any rap music? No. <laughs> the floor, it's got storage. On the, yeah, but it's on the left side. Right side, speakers. Yeah, okay. Which is wild. So I guess we can really get into that music. Uh, chrome grill. This has got that special uh, limited grill, which I'm actually used to now. I kind of like it. I've always been a fan of the crosshairs, you know? Now it's gone. Yeah, it's just certain models. I've seen it on Durango's, I've seen it on a few trucks, but yeah. They're getting where they won't put that giant ram emblem everywhere. I see it's nice floor mats, everything in this course is nice. When you get to the big bucks, you get all the nice truck. stuff. Ten way driver's seat, of course. Vinted full vented front seats. Do. Auto level rear suspension is fifteen hundred and ninety-five. I would actually probably pay for that because I like that. The auto level? Yeah. 
and they've done a really good job this year of making the empty trucks. That's always a tough thing on these big trucks, all the weight and the heavy springs. It's really hard to make them ride decent when they're empty. Mm -hmm. They've done a good job. Ford improved theirs this year too. They're quieter than they've ever been, and they ride well empty. So the heavy duties are finally catching up to all the half tons as far as ride quality. I'm going to see Ram do that with this air suspension to make it work well, both loaded and empty. The payload on this, because it is a loaded crew cab, and you've got all the extra weight of all these options, so that's kind of how it is here. And you've got to really do the research when you're buying a truck to make sure you're configuring your truck and not the stripped down base model, because that's where all the big trailer numbers from come from a stripped down single cab, two wheel drive, gas. So go, and Ram does a good job on their website. I can actually go to their website and figure out what the truck weighs, what the capacities are. They did a good job on there. I, I like a good towing guide. So this one, the way it's equipped will actually gross, uh, can pull a trailer, gross from 30,320, which is a lot. It is a lot. That is a lot. Payload on this, because of all these options, is down from some of the other configurations. This one's 5,690. The GBW the truck's 14,000, the truck by itself loaded. Definitely line to line in the road with this rig. Yeah, yeah. You're eight foot wide fender to fender, and the trailer's a little bit wider than that. The trailer, this the trailer does wonderful. Yeah. I am impressed. Cimarron's. I wish my 32 foot trailer pulled this nice. Yeah. Cimarron is my favorite trailer. I think the quality is so good. They they have engineers. They spend a lot of time on 3D modeling on their computers. I, you know, they got a 3D printer so they can actually make uh -huh. different components or testing for latches and all that. And I went back to the factory you know, a couple months ago. I think it was in June. And maybe it was in July. Yeah, it was in July. And they showed me how they can work with that 3D model and how they keep improving things. Plus, their, I mean, that 3D modeling will show you the hot spots and the stress spots on the trailer. They can build around that. And then on the 3D printer, they can actually make all the last components they want to test. And it's, it's a fantastic way to design a trailer. Plus, their welds are beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love Simrods. I like a piece of art. Ten-way seats. You got to be able to get yourself anywhere you, you want. You better be able to put yourself anyway. You can be a tall woman in this. Just sit, I could be. That. That's what, <laughs> you know, these, the headdress and all this. And none of the trucks are designed for cowboy hats. So I'm riding with the big cowboys. They sit the seat all the way down and lean it way back. Yeah. And then they can get their, their hats on. Yeah, then they can get the hat on. But that's what I noticed when I was driving this up here. Is that. Most of the time, it's running 1800 RPM, which is like an idle. Yeah. And of course, that makes it quieter, and it's just not a true seat at all. Doing 50 miles an hour up the hill, and it's at 1500. Yeah, so it's, it's not taking a lot of power. That's one of the beauties of a six cylinder. They develop torque easier than a V8. It takes a lot of engineering to make a V8 really torquey. And that's you know what most of the companies have gone to. But a six is my group on a farm. You, know, you can't hurt them. You cannot lug them down where it hurts them. That's all our farm track we back then. Between the transmission down, the downgrade shifting, and the brake control or the um, exhaust tow ball brake. exhaust yeah. brake, yeah. this is manageable by oh, all it's means. Very good. Manageable. And some of this has got to be six percent, maybe some seven percent grade coming back from Estes on Highway 34. A lot of curves, switchbacks, but yeah, you can hear the engine wrapping up for the brake shifting and the exhaust brake coming on. It takes RPM for both of those to work. You got to have a certain RPM. Great shift to really switch gears and, and for an exhaust brake to close up the butterfly, you gotta have some RPMs over 2000, I think. But these might kick in lower because this has real low torque. I mean, I think the maximum torque on this thing is some crazy thing like 1400. You know? It's insane. So you got power right off of idle, you got exhaust brake, it works well. It's not really ideal in like say 70 miles an hour, but in that 60 and below it works super well. The entire way down we hit the brakes maybe twice and the truck's done the rest of the work. Yeah, and that's the thing about in living quarters like this, we got the front RV in there with the bathrooms and the beds and all that hard wood. They're very nose heavy. Until you get horses in the back to level it out. Yeah. Same way with toy haulers, they're very nose heavy until you get the four wheelers in the back. And we got tons of pickup truck questions, right? Right. Where do we go for the answers? We go to the Truck Nuts book. 
because we're truck nuts. <laughs> and we wrote the book, Truck Nuts. We're nuts about truck, the ultimate guy to buy a truck or yep. to look at a truck or judge at a truck. You know, whether it's diesel versus gas, new versus used, what your teenagers should learn about trucks, all that. You do all kinds of cool tests. Yeah, we do a lot of testing. We do the Ike Gauntlet, world's toughest towing test up the mountain and down the mountain. We do MPG testing on the highway, loaded with trailers. Yeah. We do off-road testing. A lot of that data is in this book as well, and it's a one-stop shop for truck information. That's true. We test trucks maximum capacity up to the biggest grades you can do on the interstate. Yep. So we really put them to the test. And, you know, you can get all the facts you can't find anywhere else. We do MPG tests which you can't find on any sticker anywhere. So, you know, all that stuff that you can't find is in the book. And you can find the book at trucknutsbook.com. There are links to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all the other bookstores as well. So read about your truck nuts. <laughs>